Praise the Lord, everyone. Come on, come on now. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. We thank God for another week, another day, because some people didn't even make it. For all the crime that's going on in the shooting, it is so sad that we most certainly are living in the perilous times. Perilous times, dangerous times. And I behoove you to get born again, get baptized in Jesus' name, get saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in new tongues. Tongues that you can't even learn in school because it's a heavenly language, a born again language. We need to be ready because time is, whether you believe it or not, running out. So God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in for another uh, traveling down the road, sitting before the presence of God towards heaven. So we're sitting in the presence of God's word. Amen. We're sitting before the almighty God and we want to learn everything we can so as we travel down that road, because this is only a temporary place here. We got a place to go, amen, saints, and that is heaven. When you see me coming, heaven is on my mind. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for his holy word. We thank God for there is a hope beyond this world. And that is eternal life with our Father and his precious Son, Jesus Christ. My message today is coming out of Psalms 95, verses 10 and 11. Psalms 95, verses 10 and 11. And it goes, the song goes with the, the, that the music of ministry, the, uh, the, uh, the ministry of music she plays. Yes, yes, Vicky Wine is uh, a song that song is so anointed when we say yes, yes to God's word. Yes to his will. Yes to his ways. In Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for blessing us to make it through another week. We thank you for life, health, and strength, food, shelter, and clothing. But most of all, we thank you for you, for Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and your word. And that everybody that agree with this prayer say, Amen. Amen. Psalms 95. Verses 10 and 11. It says, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation. And you know what? In 2,000 years later, God still is grieved with this generation. Because God wants them to repent, turn from their wicked ways, and come to him. He said, and let me say it again, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation. And said, it is a people that do err in their heart. And they have not known my ways. See, God will agree with these people because they have not known his ways. They have not known his ways. He said, unto them I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. They didn't take time out to learn how God was working on the behalf of them. All that he did to get them out and deliver them out of Egypt. He said, they still have not known my ways, and I'm an awesome God. Hallelujah, I brought down the ten gods that you serve because I want to be the only true God that you worship. Hallelujah, I'm not like those gods that have eyes that can't see, ears that can't hear, a mouth that can't talk. Hallelujah, I'm a God that will talk to you. Hallelujah, hear and answer your prayers. Hallelujah, I'm a God that will deliver you, strengthen you, and keep you from all her harm and danger. So in 40 years long, the Lord said, I was grieved with this generation. And said again, it is a people that do err, and that word err do go astray, that are ignorant in their heart, that they have not known my ways. It grieved God. 40 long years, God was grieved with his people. 40 years. He said, whom I swear in my right that they, they should not enter into my rest. And that rest means the promised land. He, the heart is the soul. The heart, he said, they, they did not. They did not. They were not a people. They were not a generation. But they err in their heart. 
and the heart is the soul, mind, and spirit. It is a place where we make choices and decisions. The heart is the best, is best understood as the inner person, what is in you, the seat of our mind, thoughts, emotions, feelings, and the will. So all of this collectively, they refuse to know God ways. And God was so grieved. He was so grieved. Grieve has several Hebrew and Greek meanings. It means to give pain of mind. It was giving pain of mind to a most holy and loving God. It means to afflict, to wound the feelings. God's feelings was wound. I was thinking about this this morning. Because people don't think God has feelings. Oh, he's just a God. He's a spirit. God has feelings. He can be grieved. He can be angry. He can be sad. He can be disappointed. See, he was, we were made in his image, so we had these same feelings that God has. Like I was telling my daughter, I said, people don't realize that these things that God don't want us to do, don't want us to be a part of. He's a holy God. Hallelujah. It means to torment. 40 years to worry. It made God worry. Affliction, sorrow, and anger. Instead of a loving God continuing to have love, they had God provoke God with all this, these feelings. To make sorrowful, to excite regret. And God said it grieved him that he ever made man. He regretted. So we can have some regrets too, right? <laughs> and the decisions that we made. It means to offend, to displease, to provoke. The people provoke God with these feelings. The feelings of grief. He said that I should, they should not, they must not, they will not enter into the promised land. People don't realize God, like I say, God has feelings. And whatever you sow, you're going to reap. They reap this on themselves. It wasn't God that wanted to keep them out of the promised land. It was that they never wanted to know him, know his ways, and appreciate his ways. Appreciate that he came down. Hallelujah, he came down. A pharaoh wasn't even expecting, but he is a 70-year-old man, walked into his court, hallelujah, and told him what God wanted. Let my people go. So they can serve him. When God got through with Pharaoh and his armies and them people, they was wrong. They was destroyed. You don't want God to come down. Hallelujah. Because when he leaves, he's going to leave you in Rome. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In Proverbs 14 and 12, it says, there is a way that seems right to a man. There's a way that seems right to us. That's why we shouldn't have no confidence in this flesh. We think right is wrong and wrong is right. Is it? But at the end of it, is it? But its end is the way of death. The way that seems right to us is the end. Is what end up and is the way of death. And death is in the lake of fire. So that's why it's good to know God's ways and allow Him to have control of our life. And the Lord said, "I swear." And the word "swear" means to utter a curse. Is I swear that they will not enter into my rest. So in Hebrews, it means to declare or confirm a word or a promise. And God kept his promise. The majority of the, people, the Jewish people that he delivered out of Egypt did not make it to the promised land. They didn't make it to the promised land. God took the, took the Jews out of Egypt, but the, but the Jews didn't want Egypt to be taken out of them. I'll say it. I'll say it. In Psalms 103, 7, he said, he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel, yet they did not know, yet they did not know God. He said, I made my ways, in Psalms 103 and 7, I'm going to say it again, he made known his ways to Moses. Through Moses, he's used Moses. He used Moses, he set up the Ten Commandments. His, his acts to the people of Israel, yet they did not know. And Job and Jeremiah 10 and 21, he said, Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. But yet people want to direct their own way. They say, I know, but I won't. And what I what they want is against what God wants. He said, It is not. He said, Oh Lord, I'm gonna say that again in Jeremiah 10, 23, oh Lord. 
I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his step. But when man gets grown, they say, I can do what I want to do. I'm going to walk where I want to walk, talk the way I want to talk, do whatever I want to do. I don't want God to direct my path. This is a big problem with so many people today. They want to direct their own step. When people refuse to know God's ways, it gives them an excuse to do what they want to do and not do what God wants them to do. So the words, they have not known my ways mean, the word known is to learn or study to know. Get a knowledge of and be a friend. Who would want to be a friend of God? Known also means to understand. God wanted them to recognize him. They already was worshiping these false gods. He said, I want you to know my way so you can recognize who I am. I am that I am. And it also means to identify. Because I want you to identify me from all these false gods, dead gods, worshiping what I create instead of the creator. And the ways made a path, a journey, and to go even today. God wants the people to know his ways, to walk in the path that he has chosen. And in Psalm 16 11, he said, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At the right hand, there are pleasure forevermore. And Psalms 119.35 said, Make me to know the path of thy commandments, Lord. For therein do I delight. And then in Psalms 119, 105, it says none. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It pays to know God's ways. He will never leave us to destruction. God has no hidden, no hidden agenda like Satan does. He will pay your way with every money, women, men, sex, and everything you want. He will never show you your end. Lord God, in Jeremiah 4, 22, he said, for my people are foolish. God really used that word, foolish and fool, don't he? <laughs> like he said, a fool says in his heart, there is no God. A fool utters all they mind. <laughs> and you know, Lord, you use that. We have to be careful, don't we? <laughs> he said, for my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are it says, astonish. That means they're foolish, stupid, and senseless children. Woo! God's saying it's not. <laughs> and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Woo! Lord, this is in Jeremiah 4.22. The word known again is to know by experience. God said in, in 40 years, 10 days and 40 years, we had to add the 10 days it took God to deliver them out of Egypt, plus 40 years, they still have not known my ways. Oh, my Lord, they did not experience the reality of knowing how to live out God's way of life. They were unbelieving in their approach to God. Everything that God, to Moses, did, they would mumble and complain. For 40 years, God demonstrated his grace to Israel. He revealed himself through many ways, yet after showing himself numerous times, Israel did not come to grips with who God was and what he did for them, many of them, a way in a place wherein we walk. God's path for people are clearly revealed. He don't make it complicated. He make it plain and simple. They are not puzzling or mysterious. And 1 Peter 2 and 9, it said, you are a chosen race, talking about the New Testament now, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people in order that ye may proclaim the mighty acts of him. God wants us to proclaim the mighty acts. He brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's a mighty act. Amen. And then to know how he brought us out through Jesus' suffering, crucifixion on the cross, 
Hallelujah. And that not only that Jesus came to, to save us from our sins, but Jesus went to get that promise. Amen. We forget about that promise. He went to get that promise so we would not continue in sin. Bible said, shall you continue in sin? God forbid. And so we have the forbidden spirit in us that forbid us and give us power to overcome the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of mind. We are without excuse. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord put special influence on be holy. And then in, in Leviticus uh, 19 to 20, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation and the children of Israel, and say unto them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord, am holy. So the Lord did. He put special emphasis on be holy. The word holy in Hebrew means Kadash, which means to be sanctified, consecrated, and dedicated to be separated from the world and worldliness. And the word B, the word B means when you say be holy, remain holy, stay holy, exist in the holiness of God. Be present in holy. We can't afford to be absent in holiness. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to be present. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And in the Old Testament, God wanted his people to be holy, and they did not have the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? He wanted them to be holy, and they didn't have the Holy Spirit. So we don't have no excuse. God really wants us to be holy because we have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It's a mind and a dedication and a discipline that we have to be holy. And now God said, be holy, because he knew that they could be holy if they obeyed the laws that he gave, the, uh, the Ten Commandments that he gave Moses, that they could be what? Holy. Wow, in the New Testament, those that have the Holy Spirit, we should know what God wants from us, and that is to be what? Holy. In 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, but as he which hath called us is holy, and look at that. He spoke it to that and to, spoke it to his people in the Old Testament. Then dropped down into the New Testament saying the same thing. For God is the same what? Yesterday, today, and what? Forever. In 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, he said, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be you, you holy in all manner of conversation. You know, people cuss. They tell those foul jokes. They would cuss like a sailor. And not only in all manner of conversation, but in all manner of behavior. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. When God repeats himself in scripture, which he did here, in Hebrew it means God is reminding us of something. Don't you forget this. Not only am I going to say it one time in the Old Testament, I'm going to repeat it again in the New. He's reminding us of something. They have not known my ways, as mentioned in Psalms 95 and 10, and in the New Testament also. It says in Hebrews 3 and 10, wherefore I was grieved. And look how God brought, look how he came back in the Hebrews and repeated it. He was grieved with these people in the book of Psalms, and here in Hebrew, down through these generations, hallelujah, in the New Testament, he's repeating it again. He said in Hebrews 3.10, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said they do err. They go astray. They are ignorant in their heart. And they have known, have not known my ways. God was thinking about this in the New Testament. He had to think about this because it wasn't God's will to destroy all those people. To kill them, to send snakes and open up ground and, and all these things he had to do with them. Why haven't you known my ways? I think even if you can carry on to the parents, because the parents be teaching these children and teaching them and teaching them and teaching them. Sometimes they have to beat the child, because the Bible says, beat the child and you shall not die. Said, this beating will deliver you from hell. He's not talking about abuse. He's talking about just whack, whack, whack. And he said, deliver you from hell. And because they have not known my ways. Sometimes when the parents whip the child, they go in the room and cry, why have they not known my ways? Why is it that they don't know what I want? Why? 
Do they want to do what they want to do? Why would they want to go by their own rules? That's what the people did in the Old Testament, and sad to say, they joined it in the New Testament. For therefore, it is just as important for the New Testament Christian to know God's ways as it was for the Old Testament. Because he said it in the New Testament, he brought it into the, into, um, I mean the Old Testament, and he brought it into the New. To know God's ways is what he says, by what he does, not only by what he says, but what he does and by what he wants for and from his people. That's how we know his way. The more we obey God and his word, the more we know his way. The more we humble ourselves. Jesus paid a very painful and suffering price for our sins. He went to his Father, like I said earlier, and received the Holy Spirit so that we could be a holy people and learn to know God's ways. And in Psalms 33 and 11, it is the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. See, God's words and ways are everlasting. And Malachi 3 and 6 is, For I am the Lord, I change not. What I said in the Old Testament, I repeat in the New. Know my ways. Hallelujah. Know how I deal with you in the vision. Know how I brought you out of darkness into my mouth's life. Know how I protect you. How I hear and answer your prayers. Know that even in your suffering, God is keeping an eye on you. You will not put no more on you than you can bear. I thought about that scripture. And I said, Lord, you really don't. Because sometimes we feel like this is more than we can bear. But I watch how God did. He removed one so I can focus on the other. Glory, hallelujah. So he didn't add, he subtracted. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will not put no more on us that we can bear. We'll do it, but he won't. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And Malachi, Malachi um, 3 and 6, for I am the Lord, and again, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. See, God said, I am the Lord, I change not. See, that's why you're not consumed, amen. <laughs> he watches over his word. Hallelujah to bring it to pass. He would not let his word return unto him void, unto him void. And Psalms 89 and 34 is my covenant will I not break, not nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. He won't even alter it. He, that means he won't change it, he won't take it away. Whatever he said he's gonna do, he will do. Hallelujah. He said, I change not, I will not alter it. He's straightforward. Stand on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Be like that tree. Hallelujah. Planted by the water. I ain't moving. Hallelujah. I ain't moving. Till I see the promises of God come to me in my face and in my life. In Psalms 37, 23, the steps of a man, good man. See, a bad man, God can order his step. A evil man, disobedient, rebellious man. He said, I can't order his step, but the step of a good man. I ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. God was grieved with that generation. God is also grieved with this generation because they do not refuse to know his ways, to know that God is and God loves them, to love God, to love him, to worship him, to serve him, to obey him. Moses' prayer in Exodus 33 and and 13 says, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now. He wanted to right now, this moment, your way. He wanted to know God's way. That's why he, he was a humble man that God called upon. He says, show me now your way. Show me what you want. Show me what you're all about. I want to be your friend. I want to know your way. I don't want to step outside and do my way, my will that I may know you. He wanted to know God. And to know God is to know his way. That I may find grace in your sight and consider 
that this nation is your people. And in Psalms 103, 7, he said, but God made known again to Moses his way, that his acts unto the children of Israel. This was worth repeating. All the people of Israel witnessed God's act and saw the judgment of God upon the Egyptians. They saw the parting of the sea, the water drowning the Pharaoh army. They saw and ate man from heaven, the water from rock, and many other miracles, including the ten miracles. If anything, if anybody should have known God, it would have been them. Amen? It would have been them. The people should have known God for an awesome deliverer, supernatural provider, hallelujah, and protector. But they refuse to believe in the only true and, and living God. They refuse, hallelujah, to put in their heart that I know God by his actions. I don't know nothing else. I know God, even though I didn't have the Bible at that time, I know God for his actions. God understands that we do not know, we do not have the ability within ourselves to know his ways. It, but it is good to pray like Moses. Lord, show me your ways that I may know you. Help me to accept your ways without rebellion, murmuring, complaining, self-pity, and be willing to accept and submit my will and my way to you. This is the prayer we must pray. Lord, help me to know your way in my life. I can't speak of how you know your, his, his way in your life, but I can show enough testify that I can know God's way in my life. Again, to know God's ways refers to knowing the way by which he does things in our life. In 1 Samuel 15, 22, and Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in birth and burnt offering and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of the land. See, God, and I say many times, the highest form of worship is obeying God. Obeying the word of God is the highest form of worship. God knows what he is doing. He has a perfect plan for our life and for our future. He is excellent as being God. <laughs> Hallelujah! He is excellent in being God. God's ways are the ways in which he deals with us. And his ways are higher than our ways. So it's useless to complain to God. <laughs> Comparing our situation with others. Lord, they, I'm going through more than what they're going through. You know, God ain't measuring that. God said, I'll give you a measure in your life what you're going through. And I gave them a measure. So it's equal. Whatever you're going through is equal to what you can do. That you can endure. And it's equal to what I can endure. God don't compare what I go through, what anybody goes through, and against what you're going through. Amen? Because he has already measured it. Amen? He already has measured it. He gave you a cup, and he gave me a cup. Hallelujah. <laughs> he didn't give me a gallon and gave you a cup. Hallelujah, hallelujah, or likewise. He I gave you the measure of what you can endure. Amen? may seem like it's more, but it ain't. <laughs> we must learn to come to the point where we recognize and accept God's ways for us. Amen? Amen. When we know God and accept his ways, our lives become much easier. We be at rest, we be at peace. That's why constantly in the situation I'm going through, I always say, God is in control. We must learn to say amen to God's will and his way. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. to his ways and accept what he brings to us with no opinion or advice to give to all knowing God. Who can give him advice? Lord, I'll tell you what you should do, what you should have done. Instead of doing this, this is what you should have done. <laughs> 
I said, sometimes, honey, perfection. I said, suffering and patient, honey, we, we need to be for perfected. Sometimes we're going through things just like what Job goes through. He said, I, I heard of God, but now I know him. <laughs> so we had to go through things to perfect us. Hallelujah. I remember my son before he passed away. He's all of us were sitting on the floor. We all had white robes on, and Jesus was standing in the midst, and he was just sprinkling gold on all of us. He was sprinkling sparks of gold. We had to be purified. Hallelujah. We were there sitting at his feet as he was sprinkling gold. Because in order to have pure gold, it had to go through what? Fire. Fire. The ways of God are what he wants. His ways are the divine and perfect plans that he makes concerning us. And we must say what? Amen. This is part one. Part two, I will continue uh, next week on They Have Not Known My Ways, coming from Psalms 95, 10 to 13. God bless your week in Jesus' name.